Hi everyone, welcome to module 5. For module 5, you're going to have your APLIA work for chapters 25, 26, 27, and 28. You're going to have discussion board number 4. Discussion board number 4, let's go over the requirements. You need to have your initial post by Thursday. You need to have two peer responses to any of the questions that I post or to any of your peers. And in your initial post, it must include an APA formatted in-text citation and reference to support your work. The question you're looking at is, explain the current unemployment rate in your area. The site that you would want to go to is the bls.gov site and look for your specific region in terms of your area in your state. doesn't have to be your city specific, but they'll do it based off of regions. So you want to analyze this rate compared to the national average and what it means. Now, what are some of the challenges that this rate will illustrate but our economy right now? So are you seeing a trend, an upward trend? Are you seeing a downward trend? What is this rate telling about what is going to happen in the future of our economy? So that's what I want you to focus on in the discussion board. If you need me to pre-grade your work, please let me know. I'd be more than willing to do so. But for this week, I want to go over the unemployment rate in Chapter 28. The unemployment rate is something that's collected by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Now the BLS gathers it and we classify, there's three different people that we classify. Employed, unemployed, and not in the labor force. So that someone that is employed is someone that is working at least four hours per week. Someone that is unemployed is someone that is 16 years or older who's actively seeking a job. And someone that's not in the labor force is someone that doesn't want a job someone that's retired, someone that's a full-time student, and someone that's not looking for work. The labor force is going to include the total number of workers, and I'm sorry, the total number of people that are both employed and unemployed. To calculate the unemployment rate, you calculate it based off of how many people are unemployed, and you divide that by the labor force. To find the labor force participation rate, you take how many people are in the labor force and you divide it by the adult population. So you're looking at how many people are in the labor force and that labor force, remember, includes anyone that is working or looking for work. So if you have an example right here, September 2013, had 145 million people employed. 12 million of them are unemployed, 91 are not in the labor force. So how do we calculate certain things? First off, to find the labor force, employed plus unemployed workers. To calculate the unemployment rate, how many, 1.3 divided by the total labor force gives, me, gives us 7.3% is the unemployment rate in our economy. Labor force participation, rate is like 63 percent. 63 percent tells us that um, in our economy that 63 percent of the individuals are either are participating in the labor force out of the adult population. Now if we look at the labor force participation rate we divide up a lot of different categories with regard to the labor force and with regard to the unemployment rate. If we look at the labor force participation rate, you notice that with gender, you notice that males have declined steadily since the 50s, whereas females have increased dramatically since the 50s. And that is a very interesting rate to evaluate. When you look in the book, look at some of the explanations that are provided as well. Now let's look at each of these and we're going to understand what happens to the unemployment rate and if it gives us an accurate measure. Sue lost her job and now begins looking for a new one. So Sue is now classified as unemployed and the unemployment rate will start to increase because she went from employed to unemployed.
John, a steel worker, who's been out of work since mill, his mill closed last year, become discouraged and gave up working. So John was unemployed, but John is now not in the labor force. Given that John's not in the labor force, John, the actual unemployment rate has decreased. And that has tricked the economy, because when it decreases, that means the economy is actually better than what it is. Sam, sole, early, sole earner in his family of five, just took lost his job, $80,000 job, immediately takes a part-time job. Unemployment rate does nothing because he went from employed to employed. So let's see if we are right. Sue, unemployment rate rises. Unemployment rate falls with John because he's a discouraged worker. He left the labor force. That's what's key to them. Sam, unemployment rate change. He went from employed to employed. Just because he went to part-time doesn't mean the rate has changed. What does the rate really tell us? It excludes discouraged workers. It does not distinguish between full-time and part-time. And there's a lot of people that don't report their work status in the BLS. So there's a lot of things that we have to evaluate when we look at the BLS. It's not the best indicator, but it's the only indicator that we have right now to really evaluate what's going on. One of the things that we find challenging is the duration of unemployment. Typically, about 33% of the individuals are unemployed for under five weeks. 66% of them are unemployed for under 14 weeks, and 20% of them are about six months. That's important to look at because when you have individuals that are unemployed for extended periods of time, that's when the economy is really struggling, when it's unemployed for an extended period of time. So you want to keep people back into another job right away. Then we have different types of unemployment. We have the natural rate of unemployment, which is where we fluctuate around. Natural rate is where we try to achieve, where we're at full employment, between 3 and 5%. Then you have cyclical unemployment, deviation around the unemployment. Anyone that's cyclically unemployed lost their jobs because of the ups and downs of an economy. We have frictional unemployment. Frictional unemployment is looking at individuals that lost their jobs and they're in between jobs. Then you have structural unemployment where something in the business has changed with regard to the structure of the business. So they're structurally unemployed. These are some of the concepts that we're focused on this week. If you need additional resources, please look in the course as I look forward to your effort.